Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, shut the door. Shut the door. Pour out the oil. Pour out the oil. In verses 5, when she shut the door and poured out the oil, there's another door I want to talk to you about, about shut. Somebody shout, there's some worldly doors that have to get shut. If God's going to pour his oil out. Psalms 89 again declares, I found, verse 20, in my servant David, and with my holy oil I anointed him. Somebody shout, the oil is holy. The oil is holy. And seeing in these scriptures, there's vessels. Friend, the devil knows he can't stop the oil but one way. And that's to corrupt the vessels. <laughs> he knows he can't stop the oil, but he says, if I can stop the vessels, well, then I can hinder the oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Because in the conclusion of the story, when mama had no more empty vessels, the oil stayed or it stopped. Somebody shout the outpouring discontinued. It stopped. It ceased because she had no vessels more. No vessels empty enough ready for some more. Hallelujah. So as long as God's got some vessels that are ready, that are empty, come on church, then he can pour out more oil. Amen. Amen. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 in verses 3, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Verses 4, amen, that everyone might know how to possess his vessel in both honor and sanctification. Amen. amen. Then he said in verses 5 of 1 Thessalonians 4, he said, not in lust like the Gentiles who know not God, Then he goes on verse 7 in 1 Thessalonians 4 said, For God has not called us to uncleanness but unto holiness. Amen. Amen. Wow. And he's talking about a vessel. 1 Corinthians 6 uh, verses 19 and verse 20 said, What? Don't you like how Paul started that out? Let me just say it the way Paul would have probably said it. What? Yeah. Paul was appalled. He said, What? Know ye not your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have from God? You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Somebody shout, there's the bloody cross right there. You've been bought by the blood of his cross. And you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. Here it is in your body and your spirit, which are the Lord's. Mm. Somebody shout, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are the Lord's. Well, somebody shout, my body ain't mine. My body ain't mine. It belongs, to the Lord. it belongs to the Lord. And if it belongs to the Lord, the vessel will be sanctified if he uses it. He's got to clean the vessel. And in these scriptures, God said the reason I've called you to un uh, holiness and not uncleanness, the uncleanness he spake about was that of lust. Uh, and he identified that it was fornication. Come on, it's amazing to me that we got folks, uh, amen, in modern Christian, uh, amen, they'll want to hunt die, run die, shout, tie my bow tie. Again, no offense on your bow tie, brother. I like it. Praise the Lord God. They want to roll in the floor and jump the pews. Come on, church. Uh, hallelujah. And shout around and dance everywhere. But shack still. Yeah. Yeah. First Corinthians 6 verses 9 says, What? <laughs> know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Come on. Amen. That ain't hard to understand, is it? The unrighteous Amen. shall not go to heaven. Amen. And who are they? At the top of the list, fornicators. <laughs> Third on the list, adulteresses. Come on. Will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Hello? Hello? It's not echo. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. And then by verse 11, he said, But such were some of you. But ye were cleansed. But ye were sanctified. But ye were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. In verses 9 of 1 Corinthians 6, he said, if you commit these sexual sins, it don't matter how many churches you join and how many tongues you speak in and how well you can dance and sing and preach. Come on, you're still going to die and go to hell if you don't repent. And repent means to bring forth the fruit of repentance. You'll either get a marriage license between you and them. Come on, somebody. When I say you and them, I ain't talking about him and him and her and her. Or you want that kind of a relationship. Come on, somebody. Either one. I ain't talking about Adam and Steve and Eve and Madam. 
Praise God. When Adam woke up and saw Eve, he said, well, <laughs> and you ought to be glad about it because you wouldn't even be here if he hadn't saw <laughs> That's right. Met him one time very confused. He didn't know he was a fellow. He thought he was a ship. He tried to convince me he was a she. I thought dude looked like a lady, but dude ain't no lady. <laughs> I don't care how hard dude tried to be a lady, dude ain't no lady. Dude was ugly, and I ain't never seen no pretty man. Come on, somebody. I'm about breathe. I said, brother, you see right there? He said, man, it's restroom. Mm -hmm. You see, it's got a little man with his pants on. I said, I said over there, it said women restroom. It's got a W-O, whoa, man. That means a man with a womb. And it's got a little pretty lady with a dress on. I said, pick either one. Ain't nobody here. Pick either one. Go in there. Check yourself. And if you ain't got a womb, guess who you are? <laughs> Take no rocket scientist to figure that one out. Just a woman trapped in a man's body. No, you're not, Dave. Little <laughs> Fred Sanford out on you, you big dummy. Come on, somebody. My God, you ain't got even no common sense. Hell, they ain't even them deer I hunt in the month of November. Come on, somebody, when the next fella got more sense than you got. Come on, somebody. They're running after a doe and killing another buck just to get that doe. Come on, somebody. Fight all day with that buck, but they ain't looking for the buck. Somebody, when Paul found Jesus, hey man, Ananias found him at Straight Street. And if you ever met Jesus in his Bible, you'll find Straight Street in your limp of his bent. It'll get straight. Yeah. You find Jesus, sir, you'll walk like a man. You act like a man. You talk like a man. You'll have desires like a man. And I promise you, the desire of a man ain't for another man. That's the darling. For man, lay with a man as he does a woman as an abomination. Folks in America don't. Right. America the beautiful has become America the bloody. Come on. Yep. An abomination. Uh -huh. Amen. Praise God. That's Leviticus chapter 8, verse 22, by the way. Anyhow. Y'all like that? I hope you did. If not, you run out of horns to put your halos on. <laughs> Somebody says you gotta shut the door. So the first Corinthians 6, 9. He says fornicators and adulteresses. Amen. He even goes on and says effeminate. That means homosexuals. Mm -hmm. now, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Right. And then he said, but such for some of you. But you were cleansed. But you were sanctified. Right. But you were justified. Somebody say when your heart gets cleansed, uh -huh. your butt will. When your heart gets sanctified, your butt will. When your heart gets justified, your butt will. Come on. Save somebody shout to a body will kill you. I don't know if I like that or not, but that is a little funny. Yeah, it ain't gay, but it's funny. Praise God. Shut the door. Somebody shout, there's just some things you gotta shut the door on. Some things you gotta shut the door on. Be sanctified from, separated from. Yeah. And sexual impurity is one of them. If you want God to pour His holy oil out on you and use you, you got to make sure your vessel gets clean. Because Isaiah 66 and 20 said, Bring an offering, amen, glory to God, in a clean vessel under the house of the Lord. Somebody say a clean vessel. I like that tonight in them testimonies I heard. I've been clean. Because can't nobody clean you with Jesus. Amen. Who are you? I'm a recovering addict. No, you're not. If you've been to the blood of the cross, come on, somebody. You clean. You a new preacher. You've been delivered. Amen. The devil's been evicted. You private property now. You heaven's real estate. Jesus moved in. The devil got kicked out. I say clean that's Gotta shut the door. Gotta shut the door. Mm, gotta shut the door. 
You mean an old school church brother, you know, folks used to get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Now we got folks just get saved, more Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. I got a whole shout on Sunday morning, ball in the floor, and run die, run die. Not your boat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, I, brother, please wear it again. <laughs> it does look good. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Want all the power. Come on. Amen. Don't want to watch anything. Come on. Don't want to watch. Mm -hmm. We live in such a time where there's so much grace in the house of God. Come on, bring that up. You can watch anything you want to, listen to any music you want to, do anything you want to, because you got so much grace it don't even bother you. Come and on. the devil is a liar. Hello? Yes. Come on, shout. Sanctification requires a shutting the door. Lord. A separating from some things. If you ain't no different from the world, no wonder you can't make a difference in the world. You know, the Holy Ghost told me, so you know where my oils went as far as miracles in the modern church? He said she's too worldly. You can't tell the difference from her and the world. Hello, we know Victoria ain't got no secret. And whatever her name is, that wears what Victoria said. Come on, somebody shout, you can be naked with your clothes on. You can go in the department store and you can see panties, you can see bras. Take a picture of them, go over here and look in bikini sections. They call them bathing suits. Ain't no difference except for the name. Would you wear your panties and bras and a No, God, no! But you'll wear this bikini. Yeah. Oh, now. Excuse me while I say, you big dumb. <laughs> Hello? A band aid could cover up more than that. <laughs> to a man's eyes, you already naked. And you ain't nothing but a piece of meat and a floozy. Come on. That's right. Well, I don't dress that way for nobody to look at me. Yet the devil is a liar. That's right. If it's so high, hey amen. I'm about to say up here. If it's so low there and so high here, or if it's so high there. <laughs> 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 you turn me in If it's so low here and so high there, you don't know which ends up or down. Come on, That's right. Man, a silkworm could have made more material on this <laughs> one. <laughs> My wife, one time at JC Dollars, I don't call it pennies no more. <laughs> she, knows, she knows how I am. She knows how I am. That's my woman. That's my wife. That other men ain't going to be seeing the part of her. I see. Come on, right. I didn't say I do for her to be flowing around. She means more to me than that. You ain't got no, all you got is harm old Harry if that's all he wants you to dress like every time y'all go out. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. He'll leave you for the next flusion that walks around like you do. Leave you with babies. Come on, somebody. Raise by yourself. Praise God. She said, Marvin, uh, can I get this? It's half off. I said, I know. Half of it's missing. <laughs> no wonder the price is reduced. <laughs> they don't cut. That ain't no dress. That ain't even a dress for a midget. <laughs> that ain't even a shirt, and they call it a dress. I said, where are the bungee cords? They got to come with bungee cords. <laughs> I ain't got nothing wrong with skinny jeans, as long as the folk wearing them skinny. The more folks that wear them ain't skinny. Praise God. Somebody say sanctification. sanctification. My God, they're just some. The only cheeks that you ought to be shining is the ones on your face. Come on, somebody. Amen. God help us. The one you married to should only be seeing that. And God help us occasionally at the doctor. Praise the Lord God. But everybody in the world shouldn't be seeing all that stuff. Somebody shout, he's talking about some old-fashioned holiness. Uh, uh, brother, you, you preaching a clothesline religion. Well, God help me. I believe I need to put up a clothesline in the modern church. Uh, hallelujah. Because the modern church ain't even got no clothes to put on the line no more. Proverbs 31, verse 17 said, A virtuous, somebody shout, an anointed woman. Anointed woman. Covereth her lips. Amen. <laughs> you know, in Acts chapter 16, when Paul came to a city called Ephesus, uh -huh. amen, he was so grieved and vexed when he walked in that city. 
because they worship a goddess, a false deity, a false god named Diana. Diana, a man, historical finds show that she, from the waist up, was a woman's body naked with multiple naked exposed breasts. Somebody shot it was demon worship. Demon worship. Naked women's breast and demon worship. It still is the same today. Come on, church. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Anybody still breathe? I wonder why they, they advertise all the ladies' clothes too small. This is your size. Oh, Marvin. Oh, I said this is my size. And baby, I love you, but that ain't your size. I know that line on that tag said that Joe Sabbath ain't Joe Sabbath. They put on that thing. Amen. This is my size. Thank God. And I say, breathe. <laughs> oh, the world wants all the women, amen, to show their body parts. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Amen. Now we've got to incorporate blanket throwing ministries in the modern church. Or the sheep throwing departments. Watch out, sister so and so just fell out and something else made. Come on, everybody breathe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anyhow, somebody say there's some things you need to shut the door to. Psalms 89 15 said, Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound, they shall walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your kindness. Come in and say, Ooh, amazing grace, my chains are gone. Ooh, I've been set free. Hey Amen. Time to get in the car. Turn on the Amen hey Bless God radio. And all you can hear about is somebody having a party, getting drunk, and hey Amen, his girlfriend and her days of dukes dancing on his tailgate. You know? Come on. In a lot of breathe. breathe. <laughs> Pull your oxygen mask out if you need it, right? Nitro tablet under your tongue. <laughs> Amen. Hosea 7 verses 8 said the people are as a cake not turned. They have mixed themselves with people. That means one side's cooked and the other side's raw. Well, that's a modern of, amen, a picture of modern Christianity. Amen. Baked on Sunday morning, but come Sunday afternoon, raw as they can be right back in the pig pen. Come on Somebody shout me some things you got to shut the door to. The word music comes from the word muse, which means to meditate. All music, music is spiritual. I had somebody tell me one time, said, well, I listen to old songs and old love songs. Do you remember the old love songs? I said, yeah, the old love songs. Folks getting, hey amen, naked, Lord of God, and they ain't even married, and they singing about it. <laughs> ain't no love song. It's a love song. Love. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, and then they'll tell me about certain songs, and they'll say, "Well, see, there ain't nothing bad in that song." I said, "Yeah, but let me let me let me ask you a question." I said, "Hebrews 11, verses 13 said, if I'd have been mindful of the country whence I came out, I'd have, I'd have had an opportunity to return." I said, "What's that song make you think about?" Come on. Well, yeah, I can see myself getting drunk. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> oh, now I see your point. <laughs> come on, if the devil can get you mindful of the country he pulled you out of, he can give you an opportunity to return. Somebody shout, you got to shut the door. Shut hey man, I used to play my drums for a living. I made famous, famous people play my drums when I was 18. I had, I had so much hair if I put it in a ponytail, it called a horse tail. I had more hair than I did body. I looked like a toothpick with hair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'd sling my hair and it was so long it hit the cymbal. <laughs> so, man, I'd hide my bandana on, take the jaws of life to get my pants off at some time. Some of my, and my pull boots with conchos on them, son. Uh, here I come, Mr. Leonard Skinner. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm telling you what, and that was me, man. He made that, and, that's, and I made a living doing that. Dropped out of school doing that. Hey, Amen. Glory to God. And, and, and going on down the road, playing my drums, doing it for a living. Hallelujah. Leaving it up high. But one day I run into a brick wall and his name was Jesus and here I am. Amen. God be the Lord. I am what I am by his grace. When I met this Jesus, 
Glory to God, my mama was a beautician. Son, she liked to have her a shouting time. She was a Methodist at the time. Since then, she's had to leave from there since I got saved and gone preach. Go lay hands on her in that Methodist church. First time I preach, start speaking with other tongues along with other people. <laughs> then I got accused of being demon possessed. I said, she got away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. My mama was a beautician for, glory to God, 40 something years. And then I married one. I've been married to her for 19 years. I ain't never paid for a hairdo or haircut a day in my life. Praise the Lord. And, uh, well, I don't think you need one either. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But anyhow, praise God. Mama got to cut my hair because I walked in there and said, Mama, I need a haircut. Mama went to cry. Oh, I know something happened here. Hello, I told Mama when it comes Sunday, I'm ready to go to church. I want to go to church. <laughs> she knew something of that. Right. Hello, I want to go to church. Hey man, one night at three o'clock in the morning, I was out back in this four CDs. I had cassette tapes out there, even with me on playing. Hey man, glory to God, and I was burning stuff. I didn't know you're supposed to do that. I found it later on in Acts 19. Man, I was burning stuff. I said, I don't want nothing to do with the world. I don't want nothing to do with the world. I was throwing this stuff away. Come on, somebody. Man, I can't tell you times in revivals through the past years. I, hey man, seeing young people on a Friday night after preaching a message like I'm preaching tonight, a few nights before this, and people bringing their stuff uh, and throwing them into fire barrels. Come on, you know, an old school church that had fire barrels. Uh, hey man, they would throw that stuff. It was of the devil, the music, amen, the arts and the books and whatever with the cult and witchcraft. Whatever. Amen. It was uh, just a few weeks ago I was in Revival in Bainbridge, Georgia, and I preached like this, and a young man, a teenager, walked up and threw his uh, several hundred dollar iPhone in the trash can that I had on the order. Come on. I thought, boy, you talking about the fruit of repentance. <laughs> throw that iPhone away. We got some saints, that's the first thing they do when they get up, the last thing they do before they nod off. They invested as much time in God's Word and in Jesus' Facebook, which is the B-I-B-L-E. You want to read his text there, David. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. They spent as much time with Jesus as they did with everybody else's face. Hello. What kind of note would they walk in? But he brought himself on it and threw it away. Well, that's what I was doing. I didn't know to do no better. I just heard the Lord say, you got to get out of this stuff. you got to let this stuff go. I began to throw it away. And I've seen teenagers do that. I remember one time a whole cheerleading team did that fire barrels. Hey, Amen. And they were getting sanctified and the power of God was hitting them. And when they was throwing their stuff away, they were falling back on the ground at 12 a.m. in the morning. I'm talking about a late church. Come on, somebody. Holy Ghost power. Hey, Amen. They were getting filled with the Spirit, speaking with other tongues, and the Spirit of God gave them utters when they were throwing all that stuff away. Oh, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Friend, if we're going to get it all authentic, genuine baptism in the Holy Ghost again. We're going to have to have an authentic sanctification moment again where God, amen, brings a grace not to let us stay in the world and amen, continue in the world and see how close to the world we can get and still follow Him. Hallelujah. But a grace that separates us, that sanctifies us, that causes us to shut the door so the all can pour out. Remember going to church? In some places, it's deacon possessed. You know that. Come on, bro. I remember going to church and all the deacons. Occasionally, you'd see them. Amen. <laughs> Looking at the clock on the back wall. Big as the moon. Amen. <laughs> Looking at the clock and looking at the preacher with a twist in their life. <laughs> we pay you, boy. Amen. Well, they were the big guns in this church. Then back in this time of the big setup. Big setup. Man, big setup. We ride by his house after church and be straight up there. <laughs> I thought, man, I don't want what he's got. I'm already doing what he's got. Come on now. Come on, ain't nobody breathing. Come on, come on. They walk out of church. Amen. <laughs> walk out of the church. <laughs> I thought, man, why do I want what y'all got? I'm already doing that. Amen. I couldn't figure that out. Even back then, as a teenager, I thought, if I'm going to serve God, I know he got to be different than that. 
Because they ain't no different than me. Matter of fact, they're worse off than I am. Come on. At least I know I ain't going to hell, but they think they're going to heaven. Come on. Out there telling dirty jokes to the young boy. Come on. Hello. Someone shout, there's got to be a difference to make a difference. Yeah. Exodus 11, verse 7, the Bible said he put a difference between the Hebrews and the Egyptians. Somebody said a difference. Yeah. Oh, there's got to be a difference. And somebody's yeah. thinking, man, when are you going to quit? I'll preach till I get through. Right, let me put up these notes because I ain't using none. Ain't y'all glad I ain't using notes because if I was using notes... I'd still have to continue. <laughs> Some modern thinking. Hey. hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's needing some vessels. Now this message is a vessel more. God said, I just need some more empty vessels. Yeah. I just I just need another vessel. Hell can't stop my oil. But the oil gets hindered when hell convinces the vessel that they can compromise. They can watch anything, do anything, live any old way. Hello? Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, make me a vessel. Lord, make me a vessel.